evening, everyone. Welcome to Youth Pitch 2021. My name is Ray Lambert. I'm the director of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises here at BEDC. This year marks the fifth annual uh, Youth Pitch event, and we are pleased to have uh, all of our young people involved once again. The MC for tonight is the multi-talented performer hailing from Bermuda, Miss Hannah Egan. Hannah is a singer, songwriter, dancer, musician, and actress, making her debut in 2020. In her early performance days, Hannah earned a spot uh, dancing for the Bermuda Musical and Dramatic Society. And in 2008, she went on to become, a, become recognized as best performing artist island-wide. Since her days in Bermuda stages, Hannah has, has traveled the world as a lead dancer, choreographer, and stage movement coach while also growing her career as an artist. Taking a page out of her old school method of uh, musical training, Hannah has worked to hone her talent through the artist departments, working with renowned coaches such as Craig Derry, Karen Anderson, and collaborating with global stars such as Carlos Matano and Wycliffe John. In, 20, in May 2020, Hannah premiered her debut single, 846, which is available on all platforms. I am pleased to present our MC of the night, Hannah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. <laughs> How's everyone doing? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Mr. Lambert, for having me. Um, I am elated to hear these pitches from young Bermudians. So about this event, Youth Pitch 2021. Oh, wow. So you have an opportunity to pitch your ideas. Here are the rules. Each entrepreneur will have six minutes to pitch and the judges will be able to ask any questions that they have. The judges will then go off and deliberate. And then during the deliberation, during the final deliberation, the audience will have a chance to go into the rooms and ask the entrepreneurs questions about their pitches. All of this will take place before joining us back to the main stage for the results. The first place winner will have $5,000. The second place winner will be $2,000. And the chance to win uh, an opportunity to pitch at the Rocket on November 9th. I'm very excited about this, you guys. So a little bit about myself. Yes, I went to Port Royal Primary. I went to Sam Secondary and I graduated from Cedar Bridge Academy. And I think that my community and my education has fostered my entrepreneurship mindset, I would say. I owned a dance studio in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's still going, it's still going, believe it or not. I do have a teacher over there and it's still open. So it's, it's a blessing that we have a community that can believe in us and pushes us. So thank you to Betsy for doing this. <laughs> and I'm very excited to be here. So are you guys ready for the first picture? Hands in the air, yes, we are ready. Here we go. Here is the first blue ribbon and company, Marcel Williams, 14 from Barclay Institute and Nadia D'Souza, 13 from Cedar Bridge Academy. Let's hear it. Good evening all, I am Marseille Williams and this is my partner Nadia D'Souza and we are proud to present our company Blue Ribbon & Co. First I wanted to talk about our logo. We are two young female Bermudian entrepreneurs and the basic logistics of our logo and our company are we wanted to pitch the playfulness that it is of having an animal. Animals are just like humans, they have weird quirks. Your cat will do one weird thing when you give them a treat. Your dog will go chase a squirrel and they walk funny when they come back. So it's just different things that make animals amazing. And me and my partner both view them as miracles that were sent down because both of our animals have gotten us through some pretty tough times during COVID and even before that. Uh, this is the management team. Uh, 
Uh, I'm call center manager, administrative assistant, and retail specialist. Uh, I would work with um, the sales and money and stuff. And this is Marseille would work with social media. She's the manager. She's marketing director, and she's the CEO. Um, Miss Tanisha Williams. She is Marseille's mom. She'll be the chief account chief accountant and administrative assistant. And she is also going to help with the technological techni technological support. Um, our opportunity recognition and value proposition. The pet care industry is a mildly saturated industry with benefits all across the board. At least 50% of Bermudians have at least one animal in their homes, which is equaling to over 30,000 Bermudians. And not everybody knows how to properly take care of their animals and lack of proper care can have detrimental effects in the long run. So a not even monthly and uh, every three months having your dog go to the groomer just to check on different things to see if you're vet because you have to do a pre-veterinary check, a pre-examination before every groom. So if your groomer feels a different lump or something, you can take that dog to the vet and potentially catch that cancer at stage one instead of catching it at a stage five. And one of our qualities, one of our core Core properties is to treat animals with the utmost of respect and the utmost privilege and kindness because that's how we would like to be treated. And to your animal, you are their world. You are everything, and they must be treated like that. Our mission statement, uh, Blue Ribbon & Co. is a dog growing parlor, but we hope to grow into different businesses over a long period of time. We strive for we strive for proper treatment of our customers and all animals in general. We hope to, to expand to animal food treats and to a, an animal food and treats line as well as animal attire shop. Um, with our business model, there are growth prospects due to lack of saturation, and we are also willing to offer other services that our competition may not offer. Operation will be after school and on weekends because we are S1 students and we do still have to work, focus on our schoolwork. We are service oriented, but we hope to expand into other aspects as was mentioned in our mission statement. Our schedule will be determined due to our bookings, which we will have as an online booking site where you can book with when and where you would like for your animals to be brought in. Our location is still under determination. We have not thought of that yet, but we will possibly thinking to remodel an old shipping container for mobility. Um, for the target customer innovations, market size, and things of that field, we hope to innovate the field with our services. As I just mentioned, we will incorporate technology to, to our social media platforms with e-commerce. We hope to incorporate online booking for COVID safety, as well as the fact we would eventually like to have our online merchandise store for our attire and our dog food line. And we'll be economical friendly with the plan of having solar panels for our business to minimize our carbon footprint. Our setup, startup cost and working capital. Our payroll would be determined after bills are paid and the average cost for service is gonna be $75. Perceived sales count to seven grooms per week, at least 10 grooms per month to come up with a $50 profit. The initial item cost is $3,448.83. Our duty is $759. Our licensing fee is gonna be 1,000. Our shipping is gonna be approximately $1,500. Um, the initial items would include the decor, tools, equipment, and the inventory we would need to start up the business. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we would not have an electricity bill for our working capital due to our solar panels. Our inventory is going to be at most $3,300, um, $300, and our water bill would be $300 due to washing dogs. The reason we think that would be great for you to support this business is because there are too many animals being neglected, and even if it's just bringing your dog in, when you can, that can help the animals in the long run to keep them alive and to keep them there so that you can love them as much as you possibly can. And that is the end of our presentation.
Congratulations, you guys. What a wonderful pitch. I, I mean, just for me as an MC, I haven't heard anything but you guys' names, and I'm so impressed with the teamwork. I just wrote down little things, little teamwork, your compassion. You care about the vision of growth in the environment. I'm very impressed with you young ladies. And Cedar Bridge Academy represent, congratulations. I'm so happy that you guys have collaborated as the two head high schools, you know, public high schools of Bermuda. That's big. And um, I'm very, very, very proud of you guys. What we're gonna do is take a break and uh, the judges are gonna go over a little bit of deliberation and we're gonna come back and uh, we are going to go into the second pitch. You guys, congratulations. Great job on your pitch. It was very good. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. So I want to introduce uh, the judges, which I didn't do earlier. We are going to um, introduce Miss Kimberly Jackson. She is the marriage program director. We also have Leon Bascom of Moongate Insurance Bermuda. And we have um, Andreas Glasgow and he is a past pitch winner and he is an entrepreneur. So I am very excited to hear what the judges have and we will be right back. Thank you very much. Marcel Williams and Nadia D'Souza, if I can have your camera and your microphone back up, we will bring the judges forth and they will ask you a few questions regarding your business pitch. Okay. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, recipe cake for Nam, first of all, keep the end of you. Um, I just had, uh, I had two questions actually. Um, I saw under your capital requirements that you guys had mentioned a licensing fee. Um, in regards to that, what would that be? Is that like a, like a government licensing fee yeah. or something else? Yeah. All businesses have to have a government licensing fee, an initial fee, and then a renewal fee and our initial fee cost. I looked on the BBC website and it was about Okay. And then my, um, next question would be, um, how are you guys going to tackle um, like customers that may say, are you guys um, too young to be grooming dogs? Do you guys plan on getting certification or hiring someone else? How did you plan on going around that? Because I was going to do this over the summer, but then I thought to hold off to get settled into my school year. But on, I was online over the summer and I have an online grooming certificate. I have a grooming diploma that I earned online over 40 hours of work that I put in to make sure that I can assure people that they can leave their animals with me and that it's safe. Okay, perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, you guys can hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, great job on the, uh, on the presentation, very good job on that. Um, my question was, you are three thousand four hundred and forty-eight dollars and eighty-three cents. It's very specific, and uh, I guess the first question is, what's entailed in that in terms of that startup cost? Um, that entails that is including the grooming tubs, the cleaning products, the brushes, the clippers, the combs, the scissors, the nail clippers, nail grinders the different tangling sprays, shampoos, conditioners. That's basically entailing everything, smoke detector system, we have a security camera. It's just entailing everything that we would, everything that we could possibly need. And the second part of my question um, was about the solar panels. Um, you didn't have a cost or you didn't mention that just now. Uh, what would your solar panels be used for and uh, why would you be requiring that at this stage? Um, at this stage, we, would, we were hoping to use solar panels because we were only hoping, we were going to try and go to BDC and see if we could get an old shipping container. So we were gonna have our solar panels on the roof of the container so that we could use that as electricity because it would be a lot of hassle 
to try and get electrical cords and extension cords. So that was just something that we were trying to be thinking, thinking ahead. And then we also realized that it would be really good for the um, carbon footprint portion of the questions for this competition. Okay, it's just that those are very, very expensive. So you would have to um, source that out in terms of those costs. Um, and I mean, maybe because of what you're doing, you may be able to um, speak to them in terms of a donation or something like that. So it may be, it's just a cost that you, you have to factor in, but good job with regard to that. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, this is Kim Jackson. Again, I think you uh, did a very good job. Um, and I am, uh, I love animals too, so I would definitely look at trying you all based on what you presented. But I just want to um, highlight that when you first started and you called up the name Blue Ribbon and Company, you gave an overview, but I got clearer when you got down to the mission statement. So my recommendation is maybe put that higher up in the first opening so I'm clear what the Blue Ribbon Company is all about. Um, but then I also wanted to ask you about your mission statement because there's a lot in it that talks about where you want to go. Um, and there's an opportunity to look at, you know, how do you refine it right now to where you are and then add one for the growth. Uh, my question is, when I go uh, to the online booking, when I look at the technology, I also think you did a good job in, in clarifying the market size. So I got a clear understanding of, you know, how many people really have pets. And so it's clear that you know that market. Um, but you talked about online booking. And are you going to, is there any other way to book? Is it just online? And um, I think your hours are going to be after school. What happens for those clients who, you know, may have the time during the day? Um, it would really depend. We would have to, to answer your first part of the question, that would not be the only way to book. With our social media accounts, you would be able to message us on those social media accounts. And with the clients who had time during the day, we would try to work around it. But because of our school schedule, we may have to do that on a weekend where we have the whole day free. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, judges, for your questions. We will now take a minute and uh, prepare for Audley's drain and sewer inspection. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we are back. Audley's drain and sewer inspection. Audley Millions is 18, dual enrollment student at Cedar Bridge Academy and the Bermuda College. Okay, busy young man. I'm excited for you. I cannot wait to hear your pitch. Audley, are you here with us? Yes, ma'am. All righty. Take it away. My name is Audley Millions. I'm 18. I'm a dual enrollment student at the Bermuda College on Tuesday. Audley's drain and sewer inspections, ADIS, CEO, Audley Millions. Who, who is ADIS? ADIS is the first drain and sewer company on the island of Bermuda. ADIS was created to prevent flooding, which is an issue in Bermuda. Services we provide, sewer line cleaning, drain, drain cleaning, pipe repairs, sewer line, drain and pipe replacements, and inspections. Solutions, pipe bursting, Eventualist rehabilitation and replacement technology thing in the existing pipe and utility corridor. Fracture or split existing pipe 
while simultaneously installing a new factory manufacturing plant. We place age deteriorating and capacity deficient green line and lateral systems while with same size or large diameter pipes from four inches to 36 inches in diameter. Benefits of pipe bursting. Burst and replace pipes with substantial length of existing pipe with one uh, with one step. Don't burst quick lock rod, save time, increase safety, and reduce cutting headway. Minimal disruption to traffic, buildings, and other utilities. Avoid sizable surface damage and costly restoration required for old French methods. Project completion in hours. Is to set up and minimal two sides. Target market. The beauty behind the business is the amount of fields that will benefit from our business. Plumbers, contractors, HVAC inspectors, construction, drain cleaners, pipe fabricators, pipe welders, and more. Marketing plan. Advertisements. Our company will have its own social media accounts, television appearances, and newspaper ads. We will be looking forward to a contract from the government to provide our services in 2015. Estimate annual income. Monthly 30,000. Monthly 100,000, annually 320,000. Differently, that's like for that income is for like um, minor services and, and supplies. But pipe burst will cost roughly 80 to 250 for each foot. It will result, result in a 4,000 to 25,000 bid depending on the length of the routine. First year budget salary 50,000, maintenance 5,000, local advertisement 5,000, rent 50,000, telephone, internet 1,000, accounting and legal 5,000. Equipment, 70,000, transportation, vans, 55,000, total, 171,000. Thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Oddly, congratulations on your presentation. A few things that I wrote for you, like, I am it's it's really interesting to see why people go into business and from what I see it's like people see a problem and they create a service for it so thank you for tackling one of major problems of Bermuda is a flooding issue um, so thank you for seeing that and coming up with a solution for that not many people will do that and um, so thank you for doing that in your business endeavors um, right now, we're going to hear from the judges, and um, let's hear some questions that they might have for you, all right? You ready, Audley? Yes. All righty, let's go for it. Okay, can you guys hear me again? Yeah. Okay, um, I wanted to say, first of all, congratulations. Um, I really do actually like this pitch because I actually had a similar problem in the past. Um, I'm actually renovating my downstairs apartment um, and it was like all cast iron pipe. And I actually, I called a local company um, to get a quote for a cure in place pipe, like a trenchless pipe. And it was a ridiculous pr price. And they're the only person that does it. So I definitely think that there is a, a, a space for you here. Um, I did have a few remarks though, um, in regards to, you, I think you said you're the you would be the only train and sewer company on the island. Um, I would I would personally say um, that 
your I feel like plumbers and like other other companies in that realm would actually be your competition rather than your target market. Um, because in in basically you would be I think that you'd be competing with them. So I'll probably just say um just go back and maybe revise that. Um, because there you you there are some plumbing companies that are already doing some services that you're trying to offer. Um, and then my next question, well, my next comment would be um, for your equipment course, what does that include? Like what, what initially does that include for like your startup? Hi, Bruce, so much for you. We have like four cameras, five, extra five. Um, Okay, um, and are you are you gonna source all of that stuff locally, like from companies that already bring that in, or are you just gonna bring it in yourself? Um, locally, and the rest that I can get from Bermuda, I get it all. Okay, perfect. That's it for me. Hey, Audley, uh, thanks, thanks again for your presentation. Um, yeah, it's a very unique um, service that you want to offer. And I just want to piggyback over what Andreas had said about the competition. Um, one thing that, this is just a comment, one thing that you could do is actually find people that you could work along with. So, um, you know, say a plumber or, or, or a certain group may do um, one thing, say BSE, who do the sewage um, uh, abatement and things like that, you may be able to provide a specialist service um, that they may or may not, it may be expensive for them or maybe time consuming. And sometimes you can create a niche within what other people are doing as well. So I would suggest that um, yeah, do a little bit more research in terms of what is already done because obviously some people do this um, and you know that, that could be an area uh, as well and um, the only thing I didn't really hear in your presentation was about uh, the credentials obviously um, things like this can cause liability and under a liability circumstance you can cause a person's house to flood or you know a street to flood or something like that or it could be a burst pipe you cause the burst pipe and so you're going to have to have sort of like insurance um, for your job and the work that you do um, so i just want to find out from you so sort of like you know what if you were coming to my place you know what credentials are you going to show me that you are an expert in this business well We'll be certified operator machine machine that we have. And say that again, I couldn't hear that. I couldn't hear that. We will have our cert we'll be certified to, to work work, use our machinery and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and our workers will be educated in the field. Yeah, and that's going to be important to um, ensure that um, uh, you and your um, your colleagues are certified, and, and uh, with the machinery as well as you know, dealing with the so like the health department and things of that nature. That's all. That's all I have. I guess I get I again like that you are innovative in looking at a unique service um, to address you know the flood in Bermuda, and you were in and out so I didn't get everything uh, in your presentation, but I you know I also would piggyback in terms of the credentials that's necessary, um, or at least something that would you know when people are looking at home ownership. Or, or building, you know, we are looking for that those individuals who are credentialed um, 
because we want to make sure that, you know, they know what they're doing. And so also in your budget or in your annual budget, you know, you had for salaries at 15,000. So for me, my question is, how many people are you really, are you looking to um, hire? Is it going to be a one man show or are you looking to hire other people? Well, I think now at least 15 um, employees. All right, Audley Millings, congratulations on your pitch. Miss Kimberly, I'm not sure if that was a disconnection there. I hope you got your thought out. Um, let us know if you didn't. If that is okay, we're going to move on. Audley Millings, congratulations on your pitch. We will be right back from this commercial. See you guys soon. And we'll be preparing for Island Girl Journals. So let's prepare for that. I'm very excited to hear about that one. All right, you guys, see you soon. All right, welcome back. Wow, that was such good advice from everyone. I need to take some of that advice myself, to be honest. Moving back home and looking to start businesses and things like that, I have all these great ideas and I just need to pinpoint them down and take all the advice we just heard, right? That was wonderful advice. Thank you, ladies. Um, we are going to, we're going to hear from Tree Frog Tackle. Tree Frog Tackle. Christine, Christiana Warren, 17, 17 years old from Globe School Homeschool. I cannot wait to hear about a tree frog tackle. Christiana, are you here with us? Yes, I am. Good evening. W wonderful. All right. Let's hear your pitch, young lady. Okay. Okay. Oh, my bad. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Christiana Warren. Today I'm here with Tree Frog Tackle. Uh, we tackle everything, anything. Um, my business idea is fishing entertainment for here, Bermuda, and globally as well. Uh, my team will consist of myself, media students, and other family members. My experience is having is being a Blue Waters anglers tournament winner for 2019 and this year 2021 and i have lots of off the reef fishing and numerous live streams on social media um we will be doing the show on facebook instagram and other media platforms um, some of the qualifications i have is starting fishing at a young age i started at six and i've been out with some of you to Bermuda's top fisherman, and I also have some TV experience. And my show will offer advice, gift packs, and segments, and how to assemble and fix items as well. Um, the series will be, it will be a five episode series that will be 20 minutes. Um, we will also be selling commercials to sponsors that will generate some income. And as I said a little bit earlier, it is video ottoman for young anglers around the world. And some unique things about the show is that it will be history of hair Bermuda fishermen. So um, I'll be using media platforms such as Instagram and Facebook. And we will be, our goal is to have people buy local fishing gear at local at local retailers and have a call to action at the end of the show. Um, there will be lots of viewer interaction for those who have questions and we will be doing how-to videos to help the new anglers that are coming. Um, well, I don't really have any competition because of the way things are right now and the type of category that I'm in. So what I'm going to say is that uh, for sponsors, I could use Marketplace and other grocery stores in Seamart 
And their greatest strengths, some of their greatest strengths are having lots of customers and a full range of products. And their greatest weakness would be that they don't have a phishing program. And I also don't have a physical location and I have less of an overhead. Um, it will be innovative um, because it will motivate the people and younger generation to help the island grow for more solutions and sustainability. Um, we'll be using online shopping and payments and online payments for the services that I'm doing. And we do promote safe and environmentally friendly fishing. Um, the production costs, we are, most of our cash will be going to production costs because we have to pay uh, staff, we have to pay for editing and also rental equipment as well. And my, st my total startup investment is 7,500. In, in closing, I would like to say that we are providing fishing education in a fun and engaging format that will also be safe and environmentally friendly for Bermuda and its fisheries. Thank you for considering an investment in tree frog tackle. We tackle anything. And here's a little video. Oops. I have no clue what happened. Yes, um, that will be, that's my presentation. My video is not working, unfortunately. So. Sorry, you're on mute. Sorry, you're on mute. I am on mute. Well, congr <laughs> congratulations, Christiana, on your presentation. What a wonderful presentation. I love your logo. It's so cute, that little frog with the fishing rod. I love it. I love that you are putting Bermuda's waters on the map. Like, think really big with this. You know how big those fishing shows are that I'm sure you watch on Netflix or whatever it is. Amazing stuff. Um, we are going to hear from the judges. Judges, it is up for grabs for you. Um, just a quick reminder, judges, if you can please turn on your camera and your microphone when you're asking your questions. Thank you so much. All right, here we go for judges. Good evening. Um, I had one question, well, I had a few questions, but I'm just gonna ask this one. Um, outside of like sponsorship, um, how else were you going to monetize this to generate income outside of sponsorship, whether that be local or international? Um, I only have sponsorship down right now. I'd have to okay. find another solution for that problem if it does come up. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Can you see me? <laughs> it was very exciting to hear these different types of concepts. I would have, I would have never thought of this one actually. And I, so I have to congratulate you because I think it's, it's brilliant. Because as um, as was just mentioned, you have all the fishing shoes, and uh, we always see it on WhatsApp when people are out there with the whales and the swimming and. Uh, we still see all of the natural beauty in Bermuda, Excuse and I think. Excuse me, Mr. Leon Bascom, if you could just turn on your uh, your video. There is an icon that looks like a little camera right under your microphone button right. to the top right. Top. This share my web webcam. Yes, there you are. Ah. Fantastic. Here we are. <laughs> okay. All Let right. me start again. Uh, again, it's a it's a it's a it's a brilliant idea actually. And uh, because uh, apart from what was mentioned just now about monetizing it, um, I think that you can because I actually wrote down some of the sponsors. I had written down CMart, so it was actually interesting that you had written that. And um, the other people that I had were um, like even some of the other charter fishermen. 
Um, obviously, we have quite a number of guys that go out in the boots and things like that. I think that they will be very interested to um, help with the sponsorship of something like this because what they may want to do is be able to even so sort of like promote some of their business. And obviously, you're in in media, you can do a commercial, or they can you you can say uh say we will do a commercial for you to be on your program so you can actually create you know you can create content with regard to their business and broadcast it during your show which will actually give you additional revenue so um i i think that that may be an idea that you can explore um i love the idea uh the name of the rocks um t of the rocks tv i think it's again that's a it, a lot of people don't realize the importance of a name and i i think that um again i have to give you credit with regard to that because if you if you see or hear something like off the rocks i'm gonna like okay well i can identify with that so i think that's really good and the only other thing that i had i know that you want to do this um sorry through social media i think once you create the content i don't think that it will be out of the realm of possibility to actually take this to something to um, to the folks at like ZBM and ask them to rebroadcast it. And again, doing a rebroadcast, what can possibly happen? You can get additional sponsors. You can you know uh, you can tap into the network of ZBM and they can get your marketplace and some of these other large uh, companies to assist in that. And maybe you talk to them with regard to um, giving you a piece of that sponsorship. So. Um, well done on the idea and best of luck. Thank you. Hi, Christiana. Great idea. Hello. I love fishing too, so I love this concept. Um, and you know, it's it has the potential, as uh, as the um, pastor just, just just said, you know, to grow and partner with the charter fishing. Uh, industry locally, because you could actually go out and be a part of their promotion for some of uh, the work that they do. And I also see the opportunity of growing internationally. Um, and so monetizing could also come by, you know, your YouTube uh, channels where you're getting large numbers because there's a huge international um, fishing market out there. So, and what it does also for Bermuda is it markets Bermuda in another way. So there's that dual thing that could occur, which also creates opportunity for um, other partners to come on board to sponsor your the work that you're doing. Great job, great concept, really catchy. I love it. Um, I love that it gives you, you know, specifics about fishing and it has the opportunity to look at Bermuda in a broader perspective. So well done. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Again, Christiana, I'm, I'm excited for you. That's really cool. Um, now, right now, congratulations again. Right now, we're going to go to break and we will be preparing for book space from Marley Spriggs. All right. All right. We are back. Welcome back. That commercial just made me so proud because just seeing all of these entrepreneurs in Bermuda, and I know how hard it is to start and maintain a business. So just seeing them work through that perseverance with smiles, like business is not easy. That's why I'm so proud of you young pitchers pitching your ideas. Like this is not an easy feat and you guys are doing it with such ease and confidence and I wish I had that at your age. Wow, congratulations again, just on that. Perseverance, purpose, you guys are seeing problems where you live and you're looking for the solution. So I'm just so grateful for your lives and just grateful for your mindsets. Keep up the good work, you guys. <laughs> right now, we are going to hear from Bookspace by Marley Spriggs. He's 17 years old uh, from Bermuda High School for Girls. So it's a she. Sorry, Marley, your mm -hmm. name is really cute. <laughs> all righty here we go okay i'm just checking you can also see me as well right yes ma'am we can okay and you can see my screen perfect 
So good evening, I'm Marley Spriggs and the business I'm pitching, pitching today is Bookspace. Other than the CEO of Bookspace, I'm excited to have been part of the 2021 BDIC Summer Student Entrepreneurship Program. I got some great press from it. I'm lucky enough to win first place and I do the program again. Bookspace provides educational books to all ages, mostly young people. We do corporate sales and are recently expanding into developing a book report competition. I'm excited about my story. So I started out in the SSCP program with the thought of writing book, writing a book, my own book for an eight, the eight week business. But with the new information I got about the weekly sales goals, I needed something more tangible. So I started providing educational books for young people. And then towards the end, I developed the EBRC. The Extraordinary Book Report Competition is a creative initiative to enable other Bermudian middle school students not only read more, but enjoy what they read. Reading has opened so many doors for me, and I want to share these opportunities and passions with other students. I really think that the power of books can change lives. The brochure and flyer are on Instagram now with all participant eligibility information. We're basically shortlisting all students to semifinals and then to finals to win cash prizes with judges and partners as sponsors. These are the first competition books selected for students to find out what genres they prefer. It's a great selection. They're all wonderful reads for age groups 10 to 13. This is my brochure and flyer for the competition that has officially launched and I've been registering participants for over the last two weeks. The RG feature helped me get some great exposure and I'm thankful for it. Heather Wood did a great job. But even with this exposure, social media and school outreach, the competition take up has been slower than expected. COVID is certainly not helping. It's a tough age group to connect with. There are lots of digital distractions that contribute to the lack of interest. Um, middle school midterm break is also this week and the discounted book price might be challenging to some households to afford. And with the prize money, I can decrease these prices even more for more affordability island wide. These infographics demonstrate the importance of reading. Middle school reading is challenging all over the world, and there are lots of common themes and statistics to support this. Reading is really important for concentration and focus, which is the heart of any academic achievement. There are lots of, ch lots of children have a hard time finding books that they enjoy, and parents typically underestimate this challenge. Bridging this gap is Bookspace's mission. In light of the discussed challenges, I have a competition to successfully execute that has solutions. I've pushed back dates for more time to market the event and after many weeks have an affiliation with the Friends of the Library charity. But this connection is very beneficial for increased corporate giving. I also plan to build a strategic team to infiltrate the middle school and high school students to find out what really makes re reading challenging for them. It's a piece of work that I need help with and the prize money would surely help. I'm excited with Bookspace's success so far. I've had some great sales, individual and in bulk. The competition is going well, students are registering, and I have some great partners and sponsors. This is a piece of information from my initial presentation for corporate sponsors. I looked at the risks if I didn't get all of the corporate sponsorship money I was looking for, just so that I have less percentage of the target audience if the competition didn't attract as many students as I would have liked. I've estimated over 4,500 students in the middle school, private, and public school system. I've divided my cash flow forward projections into two slides. So the first is revenue and the second is expenses. The book sales in general and for the competition are at the top of each slide. I've projected three competitions. The first one is happening now and will end in mid-December. The next two are over the next six months. You can see my revenue projection of book set sales with each competition which makes up the bulk of my revenue. I've added in continued sponsorship in line with what I'm getting now. And after the competition, I'm projecting revenues of over $40,000. In terms of expenses, I projected the 50% cost of sales for books and 12% for freight. The second and third competition stipends for other team members will indeed expand Bookspace's competition endeavor. I also have the prize money paid out per competition. My net income is just shy of $15,000, and this number includes expenses of developing my leadership team, as you've seen in my cash flow. And this is how I plan to use the prize money to develop the EBRC and Bookspace's general sales. So the website is partly done. I designed it myself, and it's a key tool within my marketing campaign. I need the prize money for maintenance fees and buying the website handle. Wix Pro would also be useful for a fully functioning, attractive website. And I'd like to thank you for your time and I can now entertain any questions. 
I'll keep the slide up in case I need to scroll through slides to answer a specific question. Thank you. Ms. Marley Spriggs, congratulations on your pitch. I am I'm elated for you because I love to read and I love books. I've always had a, a vision of my library when I'm, you know, I'm able to buy things like this, of having a library with one of those ladders that roll across the wall. I, that's just a dream, okay? But thank you for bringing books to life and making it fun and giving incentive to the youth to read more and making it fun, because it is. So thank you. Um, let's hear from the judges now. Hi, Marley. Great presentation. I um, I really liked it. It's very creative. Um, I did have a question for you. Um, so are you profiting mainly off of the sale of your books? Um, um, you mean the competition books? Uh, the, the the one that was like thirty dollars, where you get three books for thirty dollars. Are are you? Is that how you plan on like generating your revenue and profiting? Or is there another main source? I'm sorry, it was a bit, it went by a bit fast. Okay, oh, that's fine. Um, I can walk you through my revenues a bit more. So my regular book sales, I've estimated conservatively um, $1,000 every other month, which based on um, over the six weeks, I made almost $2,000. I think that's pretty um, realistic, especially because as I go on with the competition and the marketing, more people will know about my business and they'll want to buy books. So for the, whether that's competition books, like extra competition books for other children, or that's my other book varieties that'll all be listed on my website, um, that'll expand that and that'll continue to increase. As the book sets increase, I make more money and that's how I end up with um, my numbers increasing so much. So the educational book sales and the EBRC are linked positively. So both of them are a significant source of income for me. Okay, and then my, it's not really a question, but it's uh, just a comment. Um, like I said, I really like it. Um, I think this is a great initiative. I think you might want to um, possibly consider becoming a charity. I think you might be better off um, probably maybe structuring your business as a charity instead of uh, a business. Um, I, this seems like a very great initiative, and I think you can get some great corporate partners um, and maybe even the government on board. So I would probably just look into probably considering um, structuring this instead of a business moving towards a charity um, and that okay. that's my piece other than that um, great job I really like it okay thank you um, I just want to comment on that as well um, so I wouldn't say it's a whole charity to deal with that and get more corporate sponsorship um, from business I've partnered with the friends of the library charity so I'm partnered with the Bermuda Library, so I'm kind of like affiliated with them and I'm kind of vicariously using their um, name as, and they know and we've agreed with that um, with other sponsors to get sponsorship, but I am profiting off of the Bookspace business. So the EBRC buys their books from Bookspace and they're linked. So I call EBRC my social entrepreneurship arms from Bookspace, if that makes sense. So I have thought about making it a charity, but I thought that would be too difficult. It would take a long time. And um, maybe that's something I'll look forward to in the future. But for now, I'm keeping it as a social entrepreneurship arms, if that makes sense. So it's still a for-profit business. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Are there any other questions or should I take my screen off? Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Spreaks, for your presentation. Uh, always a, a huge proponent of education. And um, I just want to get clarification. So you write the you write a book and then the competition buys it and basically um, promotes it through, through that means or they use it through that means for the competition? No. Oh, I think you got a, a bit confused with my okay. story. So I said initially I was going to write a book for my business, but I changed it into sell, reselling books. Um, so I think it's good that you brought that up so I can clarify. So I'm not, I'm writing a book on the side that's not part of Bookspace. Bookspace is selling three other different books. Yeah, yeah, yeah hidden treasures and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah just these three. So yeah, they're not my books. Okay, and I guess that, yeah, that sort of like answers one of the other questions that I had. The, um, so yeah, uh, and then 
you said that during the competition is when your your sales sort of like increase and things like that. So what about after the competition? Um, is what do you plan to do in terms of sustaining those sales? The competition is a reoccurring thing. Um, mm -hmm. So it ha it'll happen. Like I'll take a break in between. I'll go back to that slide. Um, so here it all I projected for like the nine months. Um, but this I just projected the first three. You could see the trend. Um, I plan to further explain into high school book report competitions in the future. But um, to answer your question more specifically, even if I did stop after a few competitions, my book sales would still be at a substantial place. Um, right if there's some reason I couldn't continue it because as like the people would more, they would know about it more. I'd still have my book set. So it's easy and it's convenient for parents. And it's so it'll be, a, so it'll, be a different, it'll be a different set per competition sort of thing. So you may have, say, say, let's say hypothetically you have four competitions a year, you know, there are 12 books to go through. It's, it, is it designed so like that way? Yeah, so each so I already have the um book for the next competition selected. Um, yeah. but it will change every I, I won't repeat any books because yeah. Okay. Oh, very good. I think that's the only thing I had. Thank you. Yeah, I want to say great and innovative way to promote reading. Um, because everyone loves the prize, right? Um, and so you're, you, you'll be gaining momentum from that. Um, I also agree with Andreas. Um, I don't know if it is directly, you know, you move the platform to a charity. I like, because there's a benefit um, for this, this, that educational benefit, but the opportunity is to have both, right? You, you have the business and you're, you're, you're making the money off of the books and the selling and moving that. But the charity side as well um, will offer you the opportunity of more corporate sponsorship because you can continue to increase those prizes. And the more that you increase the prizes, and that's coming from others because they want to be socially responsible and giving back. And, and reading is such a great way to give back that that's, that's a way to look at um, you profiting from the, the 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 business side and you know being able to get that more corporate sponsorship for the um prizes so great concept I, you know i really like it i like these types of innovative ways to promote and increase reading uh, because on the back end there's so much positive that occurs i think your pitch was really good as well pretty clear it was good that um, Leon asked those questions because then it clarified a few things. So as you continue to pitch this, it may be important to distinguish the story from, um, you know, the business. Great okay. job. Oh, thank you so much. And I appreciate your comments about the charity. I have thought a lot about it, as I said before. Maybe as this goes on, I'll expand into that. It's just I... Um, I researched it and it was very difficult to get registered as charities, a lot of work, and I didn't know if I had that time, um, especially when I was in the SICP and, the, and then the youth pitch was approaching. So, but it is something I like in looking into, so I do appreciate those comments. And you're right there with the charity under the library, so the opportunity is to have them, um, you know, go out and support you with the prizes, because that 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 connection i mean i have both as well with with my program there's a charity as well as the business arm and so you know we go out to the charity to support us um for sponsorship for prizes uh, so you can do that actually with your partnership or connection with the library charity okay that's a really good piece of knowledge i'll take into account yeah that Yes, because a lot of companies that I went out to for sponsorship, um, like Zurg, Renry, they wanted me to have some sort of charity affiliation. At the time, I didn't have that because it took me a few weeks to get with the friends of the library. But now that I have, it'll be a lot easier for me to get sponsorship like that. But um, I'm definitely considering um, 
registering the EBRC for a charity now. Thank you. Marley, thank you so much. Marley, thank you so much again. Um, judges, thank you for your feedback. Congratulations, Marley. What a wonderful idea. It's such a beautiful way to bring together community to do. I think all of the business ideas thus far are really innovative ways to bring about community and serve each other and, and, and become closer as a community. Bermuda's small, we, we, we can be close, you know? <laughs> so I think it's a wonderful way to do that. Thank you, Marley. Before we go to commercial, um, I will let you guys know that when we come back, we will be talking to Pressure Till We Perish with Vincent Darrell. All right, let's go to commercial. Welcome back, welcome back. Wow, step by step, day by day. Entrepreneurship is not easy. I'm gonna keep on saying it because I just know it to be so true. And it's such a beautiful experience because it builds your character, your tenacity, your discipline, your dedication, your purpose, it sharpens your tools. So step by step and day by day isn't a bad thing. Take your time, get your ideas thoughtfully out on paper. I'm always down for writing it out. I love writing everything out. So that's just my journey in, in journaling and entrepreneurship. But pressure till we perish. Vincent Darrell, he's 17 from Saltus Grammar School. Let's hear from Mr. Darrell. Looking forward to it. Take it away. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. You sound great. And can you see my screen? Yes, Are indeed. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Take a moment to revisit your teenage years, but put yourself in my shoes. And if you are a teenager, take a moment to connect with me. Envision opening your social media pages daily to see your peers expressing their emotions of stress, disappointment, and sorrow. And you feel a sense of hopelessness because you know asking, are you okay, is simply not enough to uplift them. What they truly yearn for is a community of comfort and belonging. And with that being said, allow me to introduce you to Pressure Till We Perish, where we instill confidence through fashion. Our slogan here at Pressure Till We Perish is pressure makes diamonds. Our team consists of myself, Vincent Darrell, the founder, head prefect at Soltis, recipient of the 2021 Soltis Entrepreneurial Studies Prize, and the third place winner in the BEDC SSEP program. What is special about Pressure Till We Perish is that our team consists of mostly teenagers. So we are able to connect with teenagers and that demographic on a one-to-one -one basis. With that being said, our executive designer is Alex Zul, who is also a teenager and was the recipient of the SUI Art Prize and SUI DT Prize at Soltis. Our photographer is Keen Mooney, who has been taking photos for over five years. And our car manufacturer is Omar Smith, owner of 24-7 Inc. The opportunity that we recognize here at Pressure Till We Perish is that us as teenagers, we have an advantage to expand and use our passions to create this clothing line and, and instill confidence in consumers so they continue to chase their dreams and work hard. Our value proposition is that we are able to promote an uplifting message to our customers and, our, and teenagers and young adults and inspire them to do these stylish garments that we are selling. Our ultimate goal here at Pressure Till We Perish is to build that community that I referred to of, of customers who are connected to the brand and its core values. And we look to inspire students continue to continue to strive for excellence by donating shirts to schools in the recognition of academic progress. So what does pressure to we perish mean? Pressure to we perish means 
always working hard and giving your best. The vulture that you see on all of our garments represents free breath, abundance, good luck, and purification. As a retail business, we heat press our custom designs on all of our merchandise. And when you order or buy a shirt from Pressure to Repress, we take pre-orders so we don't get caught with stock. And the turnover time is approximately one to two weeks. What we have to offer at the moment is our 777 collection, which was our first collection. And that is the shirt that you saw the young man wearing on the first slide. And these were available in five different colors. The signature t-shirt, which you see me wearing at the moment, is available in black and white and is a more subtle look. And it just reads, as you see, pressure to perish. And currently, we're in the process of accepting pre-orders for our Christmas collection draw. So what research have I done? So I've looked at the cost of buying a heat press, which is approximately $422. We've also looked at branding tags, shipping fees, embroidery work, types of printing, and I've also spoken with fellow clothing entrepreneurs to get an insight of things that I can avoid and problems they have. Our niche here at Pressure to Repress is creating casual clothing and fashionable custom designs that are uplifting and promotes a positive message. Our, our, teen, our demographic and people who will be most attracted to our products is teenagers, young adults, and persons who want to purchase uplifting clothing. So how are we incorporating innovation and technology here at Pressure to Repair? Well, we operate on a made-to-order basis, like I said, so we do not get caught with stock. And in the future, we plan to use recycled materials to support our sustainable initiatives. As technology lies at the core of our business and is our main source of marketing, we interact with our followers through polls and Q&As on our TikToks and Instagrams and also social medias. And we encourage customers to bring bags when collecting their merchandise but we do reuse bags if customers may need them. Operations and the future. So most of our sales with, with, at Pasture Tilly Parish takes place in person, but we do what well, we are on the BEDC virtual market. And on, our, on the last slide, we have a barcode for you to scan to take you to our website. And we do take sales through our Instagram page. Like I said, our Christmas release, which is this windbreaker here, and this uh, lottery design shirt um, is what we'll be releasing in the coming weeks. And we are now accepting pre-orders for this. And we look to expand into a lifestyle brand once we become more established. So here's just a look of some of the operating costs that we deal with. So the price of blank shirts right now is $12 and printing cost is $12. And we look to drive these price down with the, if, if, we win, if, the, if we win the money. So ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to fly with us. And if you are dedicated to molding the next generation of Bermuda's Jams, this starts with you. Thank you. It's uh, time. It's time. Sorry about that. I just had, a, at the beginning, I just had an issue with clicking to the next slide. Sorry about that. Vincent Darrow, wonderful. Wonderful. Congratulations on your pitch. It is wonderful. I. I'm a stylish person and I love, I, I don't think you know, but I have to tell you, I wrote a song called Fashion Slayer and I think you should look it up and use it as your permit. But I'm just saying, anyway, it's wonderful. I love your idea. I love the authenticity behind it, the thoughtfulness behind it. I wrote down thorough, thoughtful and stylish. It's wonderful that you brought all of that together to make people wicked in Bermuda, you know? It, Clothes are important. People love clothes, and Bermudians love stylish clothes. So, congratulations. Let's hear from the judges. Good evening, Mr. Darrell. Um, I really did like your, your business idea. Um, I like the designs. Um, it's not too upscale, but it's still casual at the same time. I really did like that. Um, I had a few questions and comments. Um, I know at the beginning of your presentation, you had said, um, like on this slide, it had said, it had said retail. So do you wanna initially have this in like a store or is this gonna be online? Um, how are you gonna go about that? Cause I know you had retail um, in the first few slides. Yeah. Um, but going, <clears throat> did you wanna actually have a store or have it in stores or did you just wanna sell online or like a mixture of both? Uh, so um, I, I actually, sorry, can you hear me? Okay, I just heard a little bit of noise. 
So um, I've actually uh, talked with Sports Locker and they um, are willing to uh, allow me to sell my clothes on consignment there. Um, but uh, since um, printing and purchasing shirts and kind of um, at the moment we do pre-orders um, because we obviously we don't have a lot of funds to um, start as startup and to purchase clothes um, to, to hold stock. Um, I don't have a lot of shirts that I can give to them to sell on consignment. So that's something I look to do with the prize money actually is um, purchase some shirts like um, our popular items um, and allow and, and to sell those on consignment. Um, but at the moment I am only operating um, virtually. Um, so on the BDC market, like I mentioned, and I'm taking orders through Instagram and, um, and yeah, different things like that. But um, like I said, um, I do have an option to sell on consignment um, with Sports Locker and they're willing to allow me to do that. Okay, and um, if you were to um, bin, would you yeah. would you act, would you consider uh, using the money to actually purchase like your own heat press, like you said, so you can make yeah. everything in house, yeah. or did you want to outsource it? Um, yeah. So. Um, so uh, yeah, um, at the like, that's another thing that I look to do um, if I was to win the prize money. I do actually look to um, purchase my own heat press. It's something I've been looking to do for the like almost the last three months now. Um, and I uh, ha and I know exactly how I'm going to do go about that. Uh, where I will be getting my shirts from. Um, where would I be getting my transfers from? Um, I have all of that sorted out. So um, yeah, that is something that I'm actually looking to do before the new year. And um, God for willing, I if I was to win the um, competition, that's something I would use the money towards as well. Okay, uh, that's it for me. Thanks. I'm sorry. Uh, this is just something else that I wanted to mention. Um, that I actually uh, had down on. Um, uh, and another thing that the money would uh, kind of uh, cover is um, if I was to be pressing at home, obviously electricity wise, that's something I've also thought of. So yeah, just wanted to mention that. Right. Okay, clothing retail. You brave, brave soul. You are truly, truly an entre entrepreneur. <laughs> well, congratulations, you congratulations. Um, that is, uh, I'm not gonna mince, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough market to be in. And one of the things, one of the challenges that you're gonna find is that, you know, I, I like the idea of sort of like that just-in-time inventory, that's sort of like, uh, sort of like based on sort of like the Chinese used to do that. Um, but, you know, yeah, definitely be cognizant of having too much inventory and then the season changes and then you're going to have to discount it greatly or give it away or something like that. That can greatly, in, you know, eat into your costs and your profits. So you, you have to really have that down pat. You have to have down the pricing pat. You have to make sure that uh, because there is such a vast, vast array of quality. You can get, you know, like so sort of like a basic t-shirt, or you can get a really nice t-shirt. So, you know, those are the types of things that you're gonna have to go up. You, you have to go and touch and feel the the garment that you want. Yeah. Um, that's that's critically important. Um, and as I think was mentioned earlier, in Bermuda we love and we're used to quality. So you're gonna have to, you know, determine, you know, what level of quality I'm gonna have and you know, where's the price point? What is, you know, what is someone willing to pay for a shirt if I'm going to be buying it online? So it's it's different things like that. But brave, and I admire you for that. I had a quick question: Why seven seven seven? I I it did stick out to me. I was just like, why why that? Why did you start yeah. with that? So um, our first collection um was actually called the seven 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 collection because um seven 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 uh. First off, it's like the lottery number and it's, the, it's like the lottery lucky number. And then also because 777 actually has angel connotations. So um, that is just some positive things that any things that I found actually encouraging that I wanted to represent through my brand. So that's why uh, we call yeah, it. Our yeah, excellent. And so, oh, and I did want to make mention of it. You've, you mentioned branding 
probably about four or five times and I have to commend you on that because a lot of people don't realize how important branding is. And you should, you know, every time you walk around, you should actually have, even if it's a, a polo shirt, you should have that 777 or whatever the case may be. Um, and um, so if, if you're starting off with one particular, if it's the Eagle or whatever the case may be, you know, learn from some of the larger manufacturers, like, you know, you know, Nike, obviously they have the swoosh, um, you know, create something like that so that that becomes your brand. So I, I do like the 777 because it's, it, it caused me to question and um, you know, it would definitely, you know, take your flight. Go ahead. Um, so can I just, uh, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but um, so uh, our brand, it's called Pressure to Parish, and um, I'll just go back to uh, this side right here. So um, right here, you see uh, the symbolism. So um, if, as you see in the bottom corner, and you might see behind me, I'm not sure if you can see Vulture. this. Yeah. Yeah. And also on um, our jacket, um, it's, uh, yeah, it, so the, that's um, kind of like our symbolism and our insignia. Uh, okay. So that is represented on almost all of our garments, um, yeah. and that's because uh, the uh, vulture represents rebirth, abundance, good luck, and purification. But um, like I mentioned, the the seven 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 was just the um, first, first, of the first collection that we had released, which was uh, these shirts, and they were available in um, five different colors. Um, I'll just go back to the first slide as well. Um, you see this young man. He's this is one of this is our cyan color. That we had available. Yeah, so. that's really, yeah, that's all I had really to to encourage you and just um, yeah, definitely pay attention to the quality and 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 certainly um, not have it overstock in your price. Yeah. yeah, good luck. Thank you so much. I too want to congratulate you for getting into this area. You know, it is. is awesome. Please take off the camera. You know, retail is a beast, right? Um, however, I love your, you know, just in time inventory that you're not having a lot on stock. But it, what it also allows you to do is, as uh, people are doing pre orders, it allows you to identify what are those high sellers. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, so that you can continue to develop them. And I also like your team, right? You brought together a nice team of those who are experts yeah. in that area so you can continue to develop. Um, mm -hmm. The t-shirt market is big. You know, I see, and I, I do see that there is a mood for a lot of positiveness on the t-shirts, but you know, there's the opportunity to to also look at as you get those popular designs. You know, we have a tourist market, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so the opportunity for growth is there as you continue to develop. So, I would just encourage you to continue to look at your high sellers, continue to test uh, different designs uh, in the community because yeah. that that's where the profits will come, and that's where you want to put your energy into created more uh to put in stores yeah and on that point i actually just wanted to uh mention um i'm not sure if you uh actually actually picked up on that but um we kind of started with t-shirts you know um, because those are kind of most tangible for us uh mm -hmm. so that's um that's why we released a seven seven coll seven collection that was mainly old t-shirts but um for christmas uh, our christmas job and we like I, like it says here. Um, we are actually releasing these windbreakers, which you see this young man wearing um, behind me. And um, so, uh, and that's something we also look to do. Um, if we was to win this um, the prize money, um, we will look at um, what are our po most popular selling items, and we'll um, purchase more of those or have more of those in stock um, because that is something that I actually experienced um, since I started up after SSEP program. Um, customers, uh, a lot of our, I was able to recognize what we are, what was selling the most, but um, since we was doing pre-orders, it did, again, take that a bit, that window that I had to deal with. So customers weren't able to get it as soon as possible. So, um, but with the prize money, that is something that um, I can um, manage with for be better, so. Great, I also want to, you know, congratulate you at partnering with 24 seven 
you know, a yeah. local company to, yeah. to also um, do your designs. But as you increase or if you get your own press, would you also go into the field of um, personal services? Like, you know, somebody has a design that they want printed on a shirt. So would you also do that or are you only going to stick to your own designs? Yeah, so um, that's uh, another great question um, because I've actually had people approach me about that, um, about um, can I print designs for them? Um, and uh, first of all, um, patronizing Bermudian um, businesses was my first thought. Um, so because I, I, I did find companies that um, I can outsource from, but um, I, w I am very uh, strong believing in supporting other local establishments. So um, um, I was able to work out a good deal with Omar over at 24-7 Inc. So um, working with him was obviously my first choice. And um, once I do um, get my own heat press, uh, I will still be patronizing Omar um, because I will be getting my heat transfers from him. And um, he's also been a mentor for me. Um, he's um, shown me how to actually press. So that's some, a skill that I've picked up. So, um, and yes, I can offer that to other people. Um, but it wouldn't be my main focus, obviously, but um, I would be able to offer that um, to as a service as well. And I can actually use that money to invest back into my business. So, yeah, that is something that I have thought about. Yeah, because, you know, I run the mirrors program and T-shirts are our mantra. And every year yeah. we have for each camp, there's a new T-shirt. You know, we look for designs and we'll be great. You know, we, we're always looking for Bermudians to create some designs for us, but we're yeah. also always purchasing. So the opportunity would be, you know, to some of those, the camps or the local camps or businesses that have those t-shirts, you know, that's an additional opportunity for revenue. Yeah, yeah definitely, I agree. Vince and Daryl, congratulations again on your presentation. Thank I even you. wrote out some more. Um, your skill set expansion, your your learning how to heat press, was it? Heat yeah, press. Yeah. You're learning how to heat, like you're expanding your skill sets. Yeah, you're collaborating. Cool. You have a mentor. Um, the attention to details, very, very, very cool to see. Um, I'm a fashion girl, so I think that's really cool what you're doing, and I love the positive message with it. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, thank you. Right now, we are going to move ahead to our deliberation and introduction to entertainment. Um, so there are a few videos that I have given to Mr. Lambert, and these are videos that I have created, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, I am my business. As a songwriter, singer, songwriter, performing artist, um, I am my own business. And to market myself is not an easy feat. Um, so, and, I, and I'm realizing that having a team is so important. Um, what I've done thus far hasn't been necessarily by myself, but I think, I think my mentality as an independent artist has been very independent. So in collaborating with artists and entrepreneurs and videographers here in Bermuda, I think it's just opening doors for such great opportunity to grow. So these next few videos that you will see are works of myself. Um, I released a song called 846 in reflection of what has happened in America and um, with police brutality and, and everything of, of that sense. I think being an artist, it's important to reflect the times in which we live. And I know that one of my, one of my inspirations, Nina Simone, was, had a very similar mindset in reflecting your surroundings and, and being a representation for people who don't necessarily have a voice. And so that's where these these songs have come from. And I think that's my stance as an artist, whether it be in love or in life or in in just in just general. I think I'm a a good person to represent a whole slew of people. So 
this is this is my art and this is where we are with it. I am so 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 excited. I am Let me calm down. I'm sorry. This is business. Let me fix my hair. All right. I have notes here just from the pitches that I have heard. Vision of growth, environment, teamwork, compassion, new trades to learn, tackling major issues, seeing problems, putting Bermuda's beautiful waters on the map, competition, incentives, making learning fun, presentation, thorough, thoughtful, stylish. I heard so many great things from you guys and I am just so proud of you guys. Do not stop, do not stop, do not stop. We need you, we need you. We are so excited to have you. Keep developing your ideas, keep using your resources, keep nicking, nicking out the unnecessary things or adding the necessary things that you need to make your business bulletproof. We need bulletproof Bermuda, okay? <laughs> Let's go, you guys. I am so excited. So the results are in. Here we go. Dun -dun -dun. The first winner out of two, out of two, we have Bookspace. Congratulations. Bookspace, you are one. We have another. Pressure till we perish. Congratulations to you both. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We'll now have Raymond Lambert come on up. I think he has a few things to say. I know there was a lot of deliberation. I know that there was a lot of going back and forth because the ideas were so amazing, you guys. You guys looked at Bermuda and said, hmm, what can I do to fix this? I love the drainage. I love everything. You guys really thought, your thoughts are thorough and your thoughts are very compassionate to what Bermuda needs. And I think it's a beautiful thing what you guys have done. We will rate for Raymond Lambert. Oh, and also one more thing, Mr. Hello, Miss Erica Smith. How are you? Hi, how are you? Great. I think I'm Wonder to go, <laughs> yes. Well, wonderful to have you. I will leave you to it. Just one moment. Perfect. Thank you. Well, good night, Bermuda. Um, I hope you had a great time watching these fantastic entrepreneurs uh, pitch their fantastic ideas um, in front of you. It is no easy feat, first of all, to come up with a business idea, and then second of all, to put that out into the world. Um, you know, it takes a lot of uh, spirit, a lot of engagement, a lot of, it, it, it's risky. Um, and you put yourself out there in front of, of everyone to see who you are as a person. So I want to say first and foremost, congratulations to all of the pictures from Marcel to Nadia, to Audley, Amaya, Christiana, Marley, and Vincent. Um, you guys are entrepreneurs in your own right. There, there is no youth entrepreneurship. Um, you can stand on the stage with the rest of entrepreneurs who are much older than yours, you, and you should be proud of what you've done thus far. I, I would echo what Hannah said. Please continue. All of you continue. I think you have some great solid ideas, um, and I think they can find their space within Bermuda and beyond. I want to also say thank you to the judges, uh, Andreas Glasgow, Leon Bascom, and Kimberly Jackson. Without you three, I know it was difficult to make those final choices of who would go through to the Rocket Pitch Finals on the 9th of November. And I appreciate you giving up your time um, and and you know making that selection. And I, I know all of the feedback that you provided to the pitchers um, will be taken um, in stride. 
I want to say thank you to Hannah. Um, Hannah, you did a fantastic job um, in hosting and making this evening a lively event. Um, and I appreciate the insights that you provided to both the entrepreneurs and the audience. And definitely you are a talent within yourself and I appreciate um, what you bought and how you should, what you were able to offer with regard to your own music, I mean, your own creativity. So, I mean, this is only the beginning of Global Entrepreneurship Week. Um, in November, we celebrate in Bermuda and at BDC all things entrepreneur. So I would encourage the audience to please log on to bdc.bm or gw.bm to see all of the events taking place throughout November um, with regard to entrepreneurship. I would also encourage everyone to register and log on for Rocket Pitch that will take place, the finals take place on November the 9th in the evening. Um, it will be a virtual event um, and we look forward to seeing Marley of Bookspace and Vincent on um, Pressure to be Parish to pitch in front of a wider audience along with all the other categories of Rocket Pitch. Um, so from me to you, I wanna say thank you for tuning in and congratulations to all. Good night.